have referred to our enthusiasm and our passion, perhaps, and being a salesman. So here's my opportunity to be a salesman or a saleswoman here at the start of my lesson. Can I build the big picture in your mind of what you're going to learn today, what you're going to discover? How it's going to link to last week? How it might link to next week? How it might link to the world of work at university out there? Can I build up this big mental picture of the importance of today's topic? How it fits in the exam scheme or the exam papers? What to really think about? What to make sure you've understood at the end of the lesson? The feedback quite often we get from Ofsted is that staff speak much, much too quickly in expressing aims and objectives. And they speak in educational jargon, which often has a limited <coughs> impact on the young people in the room. And perhaps up on the screen here, I have my objectives, you know, the three point list. And so I stand here at the front and I say, by the end of today's lesson, you will be able to. <laughs> and then I rattle off these formal statements list X and Y, explain X and Y, and so on. Now, if you watch the body language of your students during that sort of like uh, introduction, how far does that really grab them? You know, if we were to link this back to Professor John Hattie and his top ten set, basically, of effective teaching strategies, we're in here to talk about metacognition, you know, as the theory has it. Uh, metacognition is when as an individual can more or less sort of like look at my own progress. Here's the course standards over here, and here's my piece of work. Can I now sort of like objectively look at the course standards, look at my own progress as a young person, and ask myself, what am I finding that's working well, that I've understood, I'm confident about? Which bits am I slightly more uncertain about? You know, a bit, a bit hazy, but I think I've got it. And which bits do I know? Do I know I'm stuck on? And so if I can get students to start to articulate that, to start to stand outside themselves and be more objective about their progress, the more likely to succeed. As Katie's noticed, those are not behavioural objectives. As we were all trained to write on teacher mm -hmm. training, those are questions. And they are <coughs> really so. Because I believe it's much more powerful to say to students, by the end of today's lesson, I'd like you to be able to answer. I'd like you to be able to answer. And here are my key questions that I'd like you to be able to answer. It gives me a firmer link to the exam requirements, potentially so. I can also express my differentiation quite easily through it. And as I say something more about this, and explain something more about that, perhaps you're instinctively reaching for your pens, and you're making some additional notation around that, some additional facts uh, around that point. And by the end of the lesson, perhaps on one side of the <coughs> four, you've built up quite a neat summary of key learning that you've covered in today's lesson. And that goes into your file, and that might be useful in later revision, to remind you of what the teacher covered in the session, or even for an absent student. I could photocopy that from some of my more able students and say, here's what we covered, basically. Here's a summary of it. We could also use photographs for many of our lower level courses. Perhaps I'm teaching sort of like um, students with learning difficulties or disabilities, perhaps or even just level one students. And perhaps a lot of what I'm doing would be photographs, basically, rather than words. And I'm going to say we're going to cover what we're going to learn in today's lesson. All I'm after, and all Ofsted state, is I'd like to see clarity at the start of the lesson. Clarity of the learning outcomes you're seeking, what you want them to learn and discover in today's lesson. So everything I'm showing you here is my attempt to give that clarity, to make it explicit. Right, any further comment questions on, on that approach? Yeah? A little concerned in that if you've only got an hour, an hour and a quarter's yeah. lesson, yeah. there's a lot of activities going on and I teach practical lessons so by the time we've done all of this yeah. then got the paints out the pots or whatever and done it mm. put away and then we're doing this mm. there is no time they're, 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 they've got they've, they've got to get through the course mm -hmm. but back to the, the initial point there's a big difference between presenting information and understanding it and sometimes we keep getting ourselves hooked on the presentation of the information. Right. I'm making assumptions I've explained this Marx foreign policy to you at the front that it's done. We've all gained from that. It's not the case until I question you and check your learning. Mm -hmm.